Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a cute little video for you. I'm gonna go ahead and preface it. It's not a tutorial, but you can definitely learn things from it as I learn things trying to do this plush. This is actually a birthday gift for a friend of mine and I wanted to make something super special for her. She doesn't have a plush of her character and she recently basically just made the character so I wanted to give her something really special. So I'm going to attempt to make a plush. And I've made a plush before, which here it is right here. This is Ignis, my love, my true love and everything. Um, there was no plushes of him, so I wanted to attempt and try to make one. So the method I'm using is I'm going to make it out of clay to start to get the little model and then I'm going to scale it up. I would have used like Monster Maker clay, but this is what I had lying around the house and I needed to get rid of it. So I'm like, oh, this, this works. I'm going to use this. It's this magic molding clay. It's actually terrible, but like, you know, it worked for what I had in mind. Also, again, this is not a tutorial, but I will make sure to put little notes and yes, you're going to be hearing my voice for the rest of this video because why not? Who doesn't want to hear my beautiful, luxurious voice? Exactly. And now look at this little guy in the hammock. So cute. <laughs> That's why I put him in so he could actually like, you know, hold the shape that I wanted him to hold, which was like a little curve because, you know, that's how like the little sea otters are. Anyway, I was going for, oh my god, he looks like a little mummy right here. So after your clay is dried and you got the shape that you wanted, uh, I usually divide stuff down the middle because I'm a symmetrical nut and I just need everything to be symmetrical. But that's how you get both sides so you don't have to like make the entire thing. Just make half and you'll be good to go. And just cut out all the pieces and put them onto a piece of paper. These lines that I'm drawing right here are just to make it easier for me to cut out the tape later. So something that did not register in my mind when I made my first plush was that patterns are not perfect and you do have to alter them in some sort of program like Procreate. So you're going to see me doing that later but I just wanted to mention here that this pattern was not perfect nor was my first pattern. That being said, I do actually know how to work with imperfect patterns which you know you'll see here. This is Ignis by the way, my furry version. Because this is a gift and not a pattern that I'm going to be selling, I'm not too worried about it being a perfect pattern. And once you have your pieces, you're going to put them on a piece of paper, tape them or whatever, and then scan them onto your computer so you can get the file, the PNG file or whatever file, JPEG, whatever you use. And then once you have your file uploaded, you can put it on whatever program you use and make your little alterations and whatnot to make it a perfect pattern. So how I went about scaling it is basically I went into Microsoft Word and I put, Ignis, I put each individual piece on the same page right next to each other like as close as I could and then I put them inside Microsoft Word and then enlarged the entire page and then made sure that each piece was on its separate page or at least on the page enough to where I could see the whole piece. It doesn't make sense out loud but in my mind this made the most sense and I'm pretty sure there are easier ways to do it but that's how I did it and you know what it got me the result that I wanted it to get me. So here you could just see me basically cutting it out testing out the pattern. You will have to do a lot of testing out when it comes to patterns especially if you're trying to get a perfect pattern. It just is what it is and it was definitely a process. Look at my tattoo! So by this stage I got the little guy that I wanted. He's definitely the shape that I want. So now I just have to make it bigger which right here I had another one. I was like wait this is obviously not big enough. So then I scaled it up to a really big size and was like oh this is the size of my hand. This is what I want. So here I am using fleece because I'm like, yes, the pattern is as good as I want it. Now I can actually start working on it to get the prototype so I can pattern the prototype and get Roxy. So can I just call out the way I just swiped this watch again, again, look at that snap. Anyway, you're just going to continue to sew your pieces and then eventually you're going to get a giant version of your little thing and make sure you stuff it with polyfill because it is a plush. So he's going to look, he's so cute. So 
So as you can see, this is definitely the size that I'm going for. I wanted to make it very huggable and throwable. Do whatever you want at this point because this is just a prototype. So right here, you're going to see me like kind of drawing on its face. This is not like the actual pattern. This is just kind of like so I can have a general idea of where I want the eyes and whatnot to go. So you're going to follow the same exact process that you did with the little clay model. You're going to tape it, but this time, depending on who you're making, you're going to do the pattern of the person that you're making. And it's going to be Roxy to see Otter. Oh, and don't drop your children because that's, that's not good. <laughs> This should go without saying, make sure you label your pieces, if you need to make colors, if you need to make numbers, whatever it is that makes it easier for you in the end to get all of the pieces cut out and put together. I want to see Roxy, creepy, very creepy Roxy. Yes, it's yes. Oh, I hate her. <laughs> So once you have your pattern, you're just going to cut it out, put it on a piece of paper, and you, you see the pattern here. It's just a lot of repeat work. So the difference in me drawing lines here is this is actually seam allowance and if it looks thin it's because it is because I work with very thin margins of seam allowance and I actually plan to hand sew most of this. So here I'm cutting out all the pieces. Some of the pieces will be in fur because you know some plushes they just like to have a little bit more of that dimension so she's definitely going to have fur for her hair tuff and fur her, for her little chest piece. So I actually do both hand sewing and machine sewing, but mostly hand sewing because when you're working with Minky, it does this thing where it kind of like pulls under and one side ends up being more sewn than the other side. So what I do is I'll hand sew it first then I'll go back over it for security reasons, but also I trust my hand sewing way more than I trust the machine, especially when I'm like sewing around corners and whatnot. So yeah, I hand sew a lot. I like hand sewing, so it doesn't bother me. And there are definitely ways to combat that, especially people who know how to make plushies and whatnot and they do it for like a job and whatnot, but I don't. So I just do what I can and this is a custom gift piece and I will do what I can. Oh, so right here, you'll see me doing the flipper. What I did for the flipper is I just took some scissors and kind of like, you know, made an indent in the fur so I know where the pieces are because I didn't want to like mark on the fur. So that's what I did here and it worked very nicely. stuff with some polyfill and if you have one of those dowel rods which usually comes in those like 25 pound bags or 10 pound bags whatever it is of polyfill those help a lot and they definitely help me get the polyfill into the little flippers so you know if you have if you don't have one of those get like a chopstick or something works wonders She's the perfect sea otter shape. At this point, I was really happy with how she was turning out, so yay! So here, I'm doing the front piece of the head. Usually, I'll blanket stitch the first half, and then once it's like full of polyfill and stuff, that's when I go to the back, and then ladder stitch it to finish it up. So here I'm patterning out the nose, the eyes, the face marking, and the ears.
Okay, so you see all these pieces, all these pieces that are pinned, these are the pieces that I ladder stitched on. This is what you do for pieces that you are gonna put on top and you know, try to make invisible stitching. You ladder stitch them. That's what a ladder stitch is for. We love the ladder stitch. I did put a little bit of polyfill in the nose just to give it some dimension. Those are eye markings, by the way. Those are not the whites of her eyes. Her eyes are actually just gonna be like little button dot thingies. And here you see me putting on the hair tuft. You already know the drill. Ladder stitch it, boys. You don't have to shave any of the pieces or the hair. This was just me because the hair tuft was like super fluffy. So I just wanted to give it just like a little bit more shape. So I just went ahead and shaved it a bit. And then after putting on her eyes and making little accessories for her because that's what's on her ref sheet, she is actually done. And here's the finished product. She's so adorable. I did actually like go back and add some eyelashes like to the thing, but you can't see it here and I didn't feel like filming it. So, but yeah, this was super duper fun to make and I'm actually really proud of myself. This is actually my second plush that I've ever made and I learned a lot from making this plush so I really hope Roxy enjoys it and I love our friendship Roxy and I hope you have the super bestest birthday ever. While this was not a tutorial, I hope you guys found it helpful and remember to comment, like, and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!